Welcome to the More Than Just Mowing podcast. I'm your host, Joel Cleaver, and this is the official podcast of Jim's Mowing. If you didn't know it, it's the world's largest gardening franchise with more than 2,000 franchisees in Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. And on the podcast show, we interview franchisees, our franchisors who run the regions and manage the franchisees, and also Jim himself. So there's a lot of broad range of content, and we do encourage you, if you are researching more about Jim's Mowing, about what we do, go through those episodes. It'll give you a great sense of who we are. So without further delay, here's today's episode. Well, so thank you for being a part of our core interview series, and this is for the Jim's Mowing podcast and the Jim's Group one as well. And I'm joined by Nathan Boyce, and you're from Jim's Mowing. Is it Kalala? I don't know how to say it exactly, is it? Yeah, Kalala in Tamworth. K- Kalala in Tamworth. Now, you've been with us since uh, 2020, end of 2020. So what were you doing prior to Jim's Mowing? Uh, before Jim's, I was in the automotive industry for just under 20 years uh, in service management side of things, also ran tire shops, so wow. big big customer service roles, yeah. And what prompted the change there, Nathan? Uh, lifestyle, just, um, yeah, I tried to actually get into gyms three times and um, uh, never worked out that way. So we've got bits and pieces going on in my life, but yeah, this opportunity came up and yeah, just um, jumped on board. Absolutely. Now you've got a great star rating. You've got, you know, average of five star rating. So perfect record, 52 ratings, which is fantastic, which is why we're going to give you this, of course, silver membership. Um, but so how do you maintain a good rating or how have you had, you haven't had one bad feedback from what I can see here. So how have you maintained that high, that high service standard? Do you want to just talk about what you do maybe in your business and how you treat the customer, which might be a bit different? I think it's one of the things with customer service coming out of it from the automotive industry and coming into, I've brought those experiences in, in with me and, you try to always put yourself in the customer's shoes to understand why they're getting you to do it. You know, I've had customers say to me, you know, you don't realise what you've done. You've just made my lawn. But, you know, I've had this happen this week, this happen, this happen, all these whirlwinds and things. And you come in and you do, you're just basically making their life better and easier um, and less stress. So by doing those, all those little things like that, um, it's all the little things that people don't see. They're the things that, that um, matter, I feel, in what we do. All the attention to detail. You know, you'll, you'll hear a lot of people go on about um, straight edges and everything like that. Yeah, that's great. But really, it's all those doing those things so the customers don't have to do it and doing them better than what they can and giving them that wow factor. That's a fantastic answer. Now, um... Is there any more examples you can give around that wow factor that you do in your business? You said one before, but is there anything else maybe, Jonah, um, from customers that you you currently service that you do that goes a little bit extra in what you do? Uh, put the green bin out. If you know, if you like being local, you know where the green bins are going to be going out. Put them out, but don't just put the green bin out. Put the red bin out as well. Um, yeah, you, those little, you get to know customers who appreciate those little bits and pieces um you know there's um yeah rather than then um, getting upset or frustrated when people leave things scattered around the yard put put them to the side clean up do your job and then actually put them back but put them back neat so you know people get upset in our industry get upset about more um hoses being left strewn across lawns you know put it to the side do your job then actually wrap it up and put it back where it should be you know, just those little, little. I think they're just little one percenters. Uh, but they're really important, Nathan, as you said, and that customer probably comes home and you might have just done the, the lawn, but they might see the bins being put out for them. You know, that's this thing they say, oh, geez, Nathan must have done that. That that sort of sticks in their head, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, with um with Jim's mowing, it's obviously Jim's mowing, but there's a lot more you can do. So maybe you want to talk about the services that you do in your business for your customers. Okay, so I've got a, with my business, I've got a mixture of residential, strata and commercial customers. So with all of them, I do spraying, fertilising, uh, cutbacks, pruning, hedging, um, rubbish removal. Um, sometimes that's a little bit of an adventure, a bit of a mystery, a bit of a jackpot to see what you're <laughs> actually going to put in the back of your trailer. But really, they, those sorts of things are, you know, cut. you can see the difference that you're making in a, in a a customer's um, backyard or garage or wherever, whatever you're taking away. Well, I think customers don't know we do rubbish removal, but it's a great thing to do is to use the Jim's Mowing Guy because or girl because they have the um far less, could be a lot quicker than having to wait for a skip bin to come and, and far cheaper. Um, and you could probably just take 
not maybe not as much as a skip sometimes, but you could take a fair bit of bit of rubbish away. Yeah, that's right. I've uh, yeah, I've done quite a few uh, rubbish runs over the past couple of years, and you know, great money, but also um, yeah, what you can actually fit in the back of your trailer is yeah, pretty surprising. How much do you how can you, can you fit? Is it an eight by five you have there, or how much do you yeah, bring in? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, always get in there and you actually stomp it down and. Do the same when I'm doing green waste. Yeah, you and it's actually better when you actually turn up to the tip. You can pull it out and it's all compacted, and you, yeah, you're not taking too much. Uh, to it doesn't take too long to empty it out. Now you started just before. Um, was it just before COVID or was it just after after it started? I don't know. Uh, during the midst of it, just the early early days of um, COVID. Um, I I didn't actually go do training in Melbourne. I was one of the first people to do it. Um, on the online yeah that was an experience yeah. setting that up yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah that was um watched all the videos online um but then you know got amongst it as and you know uh my franchise all todd and sarah bryson over in port macquarie you know asked asked lots of questions lots of silly questions you know that you might think are silly but are not silly that everyone's thinking so yeah and how did you go starting a business during that time? Because it must have been going, geez, I've gone and made the leap from this into this and this has happened. So um, what was the levels of work like or how was that experience for you up up there? And Victoria is obviously a little bit different with, with what we had, but with you guys, what was it, what was it like for you? Um, pretty much. I was building, obviously building my business at the time, but I was able to, you know, I was take, still taking leads Um and before gyms, I'd actually started doing lawn mowing myself just out the back of my ute. Um, so I'd had um, some Strata customers that I basically have doubled since. And they, they kept me going, um, taking plenty of, yeah, there's still plenty of leads, still plenty of work. It was like, okay, there was COVID, but, it, you know, out there mowing lawns and doing that, doing what we do, it, I don't think it really affected us. People were still spending money and still wanted um, services provided. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Now, um, you mentioned that you say so you did have a crack at doing your own. Was it like something where you did work? Did, would you class yourself as an independent before or were you yeah. just sort of, yeah. yeah. So, so why was it Jim's mind? Why'd you come, come across? I uh, just, it's that Garen, that the, the brand, the brand is what really, you know, and you know, you might, you might think that's funny, you know, silly thing to say, if you were to look, look in behind the scenes there in, um, the system that you'd see that I haven't taken a lead out of the call center in probably well, it's over 12 months, mm. but it's a backstop really. It's the, um, you know, if, you know, I wasn't to have all of my customers that I've got now, if I was to, that, that work was to dry up, turn my leads back on and I've got work again. Um, you know, there's the, the, the bloke in the design, in the, in the, on the, his face yeah. on our, on our clothing yeah there you go um you know he stands behind the the brand really um he's the one who if we get a bad survey he's the one who we've got a email and yes uh, right <laughs> after we've spoken to the customer and sorted everything out so you know yeah. That's that's where that's what like I tell I know, I know from working with Jim for 12 years that's what he spends most of his time on is the complaints so it's not just something we say for customers franchisees know that all too well that it's um Jim that gets involved with compliance if if he needs to and um yeah it's interesting to, to say that about the brand because everyone's like the brand and like what does that mean so to you is it something where the brand just means like you know obviously the work's there which is fantastic for you but is it something where commercials or the real estate agents you you feel like your first preference with those sorts of jobs as opposed to an independent or how does how do you think that works from that perspective well good good example good story um I I got a lead through for a real estate uh, job it was um i call it a christmas miracle because i couldn't get anyone to do it it's one of those jobs a real estate job where you turn up and the um the lawns haven't been done there they've got an inspection the next day or open house the next day it's knee high grass and you just okay yep all right let's go and you just sort it out um took away all the green waste to look great for the inspection they ended up selling the house great and, but then from there i did another one, then another one. And then I kept getting these phone calls and they said, oh, um, we're moving out, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, okay, yep, no worries. Um, end of lease, uh, Mo. And then what I found out was this real estate um, agent had actually, without even telling me or asking me, put my details in the little booklet that they hand out to 
um, new lease leases and when they sell a house. So that was my my name. Wow. That was actually my mobile number, and I had absolutely no idea that they were doing this. So all because I provided a really good service, just dropped everything, got it done. So you never, you never know what those jobs are going to turn into, do you? You don't know who that person yeah. owns or what they know or all that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's fantastic. And I should reiterate before as well, you haven't been taking leads for a year, which is a really fantastic sign in regards to you must provide a really good service to your clients because you're obviously getting referrals and you're doing all this great stuff. So I just want to reiterate to everyone that not taking leads in one year is a really good thing if you don't need those leads because um you've obviously got a great business. We've talked to a few franchisees today who have been taking leads for a couple of years as well. It's the same thing. They might not have as many star ratings, but um they've got a client base that's really loyal and stays with them for a long time. Mm, yeah. Now, what gear do you use in your business, Nathan? Everyone likes knowing what the professionals use. So what do you use in your, um, in your franchise? I'm uh, well supported by um, uh, Tom Benson from Tinksmo. I was back in Newcastle. He's actually three hours away um, with Palenk. So I use the Palenk. The ah. There's no dealer here in Tamworth. Um, and some people thought I was a little bit crazy by taking on all the gear. But it's, yeah, it's professional. It's commercial. And, yeah, I'm sure... Um, um, Todd and Sarah Bryson, um, of franchisors would like me saying this, but yeah, it's not AEG. It's heaps better than AEG. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the plank stuff for those that don't know, I know a little bit about it because obviously we get, um, in the training theater and stuff like that. And yeah, it's a French company, which is, um, originally did like all wine agricultural stuff. And then they've sort of gone down to this and our franchisees down here use it as well. And some run the full setup in the inner city. Some yeah. might use sort of half and half, but, um, Maybe just want to tell for people why is what are what are the benefits of the Palenque gear over let's say other battery powered equipment? It's well they they the fit one of their a couple of their key selling things is their ergonomics. Um, I use backpack blower. It's ergonomic. It's not like the big um, steel two stroke BR eight hundred which it replaced. Um, it's not as powerful, but you know it's not like I'm you know you, you're not chucking a big anchor on your back. Um, the whipper snipper, uh, back, I use a backpack, bat, little a smaller backpack battery for it, and it's just it's really comfortable. The mower, uh, I'm six foot three, so you know the amount of adjustment that I've got in that um, with the where the handles are, and then the actual main, it's the the um, fancier version of the their um, self propelled mower. So you, it's just got the one bar that comes up, so it's just so ergonomic. Um, I mowed, I've still got a Honda 216, which is my backup, which sits in the shed. And I mowed my lawn with it uh, just before, um, when was it, mid-autumn. And first time, just to give it a run. And I was just like, wow, this thing, it's just like pushing around an anchor. It was just <laughs> such, a, such a, a difference. Yeah. But still, yeah. Honda 216, you know, it's still there. Pretty bulletproof. But when it to something so ergonomic and light yeah and it's quiet that, that's the other thing with all the gear it's just so quiet you know i know you, you're not meant to but you could get away with not wearing hearing protection hearing hearing protection but i still do you know i like to listen to my podcasts and um music while i'm still while i'm working yeah well we had um jim use some palenque gear and he didn't wear the earmuffs because he doesn't have to with that because it's not over the decibel and he copped a few comments about it but you're right it's so quiet you don't really have to if you don't want to and um if you'd like listen to podcasts and music as you said it's a fantastic gear and also the battery life lasts a full day for your mind charge with one of the batteries uh the i could probably get two two days easy wow out of out of uh, lawnmower you could probably get you know probably three if you pushed it um the whipper snipper being a smaller one you know it's probably a day and a half to two yeah the blow was probably a couple of days yeah was that the main appealing thing to you obviously the ergonomics of it but was the battery life because i know with every other brand no other brand can replicate the palenk battery life yet they've got to have multiple batteries and this and that so was that was that something that you really find appealing as well yeah the efficiency and the probably more the ergonomics like i tried the steel still um uh self-propelled mower and I was ready to go. I was, I'd actually said to a local dealer here in Tamworth, I said, yeah, I'm ready to go. I want to buy it. And then he took a little bit to get back to me. It took a couple of days and I thought, oh, I'll find out about the plank, you know, just, and then ended up getting uh, um, uh, Tom from Tinks was able to organise, uh, to get a mower up here and um, tried it. And I was just like, yeah, this thing's, it's heaps better than the steel. It's actually, I've been told afterwards that, the steel is Palenque's old technology. So, ah. yeah. 
There you go. You know, the Palenks, they just can't bring them into the country enough. There's a lot of demand for those things. And it's just very, as a distributor, it's hard to, it's very hard to get a lot of them in here. But um, yeah, I'm glad to hear you love the gear. And Jim's a big proponent of the battery stuff. So he'd be rapt to hear that. And I was going to say now about your support from your franchisor. So people outside Jim's might not know, but you have a franchisor who basically runs the region and is there to assist with you. So how has your support been from your franchisor? And what are the sorts of things that they help you out with? Um, they probably start now. They don't really offer me a lot of support. That might sound like a silly thing to say or a bad thing to say about them. But my business is at the point where I don't really need them. Like, you know, they're more people that you just catch up with and have a chat, see how you go and what you've been doing. But from the early days, you know, yeah, lots of silly questions, you know, setting up the territory right, getting the, the geo map set up right, um, you know, the, all helping you not to make mistakes. So, um, you know, do, you know, should I do this? Should I do that? Um, you know, we, we hop on um, every, every month uh, to start off with um, a Zoom meeting um, with all the people who are in the Northern New South Wales area. And then we, uh, that's been spread out to um, every couple of months now. Um, whenever they're in town, catch up, have a meal, see how things are now. Um, and I've actually probably helped them out a, a fair bit as well. I've uh, trained up a um, franchisee here in town from who was green, could not mow a lawn to save himself. And he's actually, I think he's got more um, five-star ratings than me now. I think he'd have to be in his 60s, 70 easy. Oh, wow. And um, then, you know, there's a couple of other guys who came on board, brand new guys, just drive around, talk to them about pricing and, you know, helping them out um, to get an idea saying, hey, this is this is one of my jobs here. How much do you think it's worth? You know, going through all the little things, the real, real world things about quoting, because that's one of the things that um, I found with uh, franchisees, past franchisees who aren't around anymore, they don't know the worth of themselves they don't know the value of the brand that they're they're you know they're towing around them on the back of their trailer every day so knowing what you're worth that's probably one another key thing that i've they've been tried to impart with these guys that i've trained as well that's a great um, point yeah. nathan that's a great point can you elaborate on that about knowing what you're worth because that some people might feel weird like there's a really good point some people can just charge you know high price and that's their fine with that whereas some people get that it might feel a bit, you know, it might be an easy job for them to do, but they don't price that accordingly as well with their value that they see. So how did, was that a problem for you in the early days? Was that something, how did you get over that sort of, that, 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 um, that mentality? Yeah, I, I, I didn't get it right to start off with. I priced some jobs and I'll, you, you get halfway through it and you go, yeah, I haven't quoted this properly, but Still, you, you, you've quoted it. You just get it done. You make make sure the customer's happy. You provide the best service you can and you can learn from it and move on. You know, I did it a few times, you know, and I, you know, every now and again, you, I, I haven't quoted a lot of work to, for, for a little while just with everything that I do now. But, um, you know, I always make sure that I quote properly now because you just, you don't want to get into a job and go, yeah, I haven't really quoted this properly. And then it to become a frustration and aggravation to you. Um, but, you know, regular mowing, that's probably one of the biggest things. If you don't actually quite a job properly to start off with, and then you get that and you're there every fortnight and you're doing it, you know, you, you're not going to enjoy it. It's not going to be fun. So you need to know what you're worth. You need to know that that job, what it's worth to the customer, you know, whether it's a, just a normal front and back lawn edges blowing, you know, and it's eighty eight dollars. Is that what you, if, if that's what say that's what you're charging? I think that's probably the average price. Whereas you, you know, yep, that's that's good money for what I'm doing. Whereas you get some people, um, independents who would do it for maybe sixty six dollars, and they'd be happy with that. Um, so, but knowing knowing what you're worth, because there's, there's so many, you know doing a job and being frustrated when you're doing it because you know you're not getting paid properly. You know, you don't want to be there. That's just, that's a world of pain as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Um, but then some people will get caught that they won't actually, they will go, I'm only getting paid X amount of dollars for this. I don't want to, you know, I won't do it as, as good a job. I'll, you know, I won't blow down. I won't, you know, you just don't, don't want to get caught up, you know, the, but 
knowing that that what that brand can do the the branding that we've got you know going back to the real estate um um referral that i get now you know from doing a couple of good jobs you know knowing know what you're worth know that you know people are they go to the gym's brand because they know it's a quality it's a quality system you know whether it's gym's cleaning or whether it's um you know gym's building inspections they're the two other franchises here in town so yeah uh, it's great advice there as well. And uh, really, really hopefully people listen to that because I get the sense sometimes some franchisees in the early days find that hard with the with the pricing. And as you said, if you get a regular customer and you're locked into that, it sort of just puts you in a bad mood every time you might go to that job every couple of weeks. Yeah. So well, looking back on your journey so far, Nathan, what would, what was some advice you might have given to yourself back then when you were starting out? Is there something that you would have maybe done differently or maybe would have helped you along a bit better in, in, in your business journey? Um, not to wait for over 12 months to have a holiday, <laughs> um, book in regular holidays, you know, and, um, probably not to go. So not to think that you can work as hard as what you do during spring and summer, the growing season as what you can during, um, winter. That's just, I did that for my first year because it's the unknown, you know, being in business for the first time and you go, Oh, I just want to, I just got to keep putting money in the bank. Just got to keep putting money in the bank. So your leads are on seven days a week. You know, you, I think you've got to set that boundary where leads run only five days a week if, um, and have your weekends for your family. You know, that's family time. Because why, why do you go into business for yourself? You, you work for yourself so you can, yeah, provide better, more for your family but then also create a better lifestyle for yourself and your family. So to be there for them. Like I see, I see gyms guys um, running around on Saturdays and Sundays and I just, I, I don't understand. I don't know why they do that. So yeah, I I'll, I'll, don't work weekends, um, have holidays and don't work so hard. Don't work yourself so hard during winter. Actually take the time not to, you know, um, to have a break, to, um to recharge the batteries let the let the body have a bit of a recoup as well absolutely i think yeah the body's important to rest and obviously the mind as well but yeah it's great to hear that you've got a lifestyle business for yourself and in regards to income you don't have to say what you're making but in regards to income are you happy with your level and, and where, where you're at oh yeah like my um my level income yeah i won't go into the details of it but yeah it's yeah it's it's good it's worth it's it is a really good business to be. Um, I jokingly, um, someone mentioned, you know, saw the type of vehicle that I drive and then they've gone, oh, okay, must be some money in this mower. <laughs> and then um, I had a friend of mine back in uh, the dealership locally here where I used to work and he he said to me, he said, oh, so, you know, with, with your business, with the mowing and everything, do, do you make more than what you did when you worked here? <laughs> I had a little bit of a giggle and said, yeah. Like it's, yeah, and more. Um, so it's um, I'm, yeah, it would be you'd be doubling doubling what I used to used to make uh, in what I used to do to net to net. You know, it's the does income it, rate. Yeah. Does it surprise you that people don't think that? Because I think there's still a bit of a stigma with home services, right? So cleaning or with with gardening, and people just think, oh yeah, that's you know twenty dollars or thirty dollars an hour, which is obviously not. But they have that mindset still, whereas they might do something. You know, which it might sound a bit more prestigious, but they're not doing they're doing financially a lot less maybe and working a bit more. Mm. I think it's also that sometimes there's that yeah, there's that home care, you're only doing a providing a service, you know, it's not the nicest work. So, you know, there's that perceived that you're not earning that much money. But yeah, it's far from it. Like I yeah, I sometimes um what I what I can what I can earn, the, the ability to earn without even having leads turned on is just crazy. Like, and you know, I see the unserviced leads come through. Um, yeah. Um, it's, I had a friend who, uh, used to work with his independent, he's independent and he's gone, he's gone full time in the last six months and he's, he's even surprised himself. And I had a chat to him about what he's, um, uh, what he was charging. And yeah, I said, no, you need to increase your prices. You know, you, and same thing as what I was saying before. You need to know you know what you're worth, you know. Mm. And um, no, that's great to hear about that with your friends. And that's that's so uh, you got a couple of friends who are independent. So, what how does it compare to you 
seeing what, I mean, what they go through in regards to maybe work lead generation compared to what you do with yourself? Uh, I, they're chasing their tail. I can see that. They're, you know, during summer, I'm usually finished on home by you know, 1.30, 2 o'clock because it's just, I'll, I'll be starting the first job at 7 o'clock in the morning, sometimes a little bit earlier because of using the electric gear. But I'll, um, you know, I can, and I can see they're out working on weekends too. Um, but yeah, and the dollar value, what they, what they can charge. Yeah. The, also the, the, he, this person who, the independent who I used to um, uh, work with, he, he was really scared. He's, he's still a little bit concerned about what winter was going to look like for him, you know. He said he was, you know, he'd built up a bit of a savings in the bank, but he was still concerned and he had actually had other employment sort of lined up in just in case. Whereas, mm-hmm. yeah, he doesn't have the, he did, he, I remember speaking to him about it. He said that he, you know, he considered Jim's, he considered Fox, but he said Jim's was probably the better option, but he just didn't have the um, capacity to get the finance to to set himself up with Jim's. Mm-hmm. But he well, said it was just that the availability of work and the reputation. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say the other franchises must be happy with you in the area doing such great work and not being on leads because you're probably generating leads for them via your, via your goodwill as well with all, everything you do. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure Todd and Sarah probably appreciate me saying <laughs> that, but yeah, we could, um, I think easily Tamworth could have two more gyms, my franchise is running around and you know, there's that much work. Yeah. So, and do you think the fees are fair in regards to what you pay for what you get? Or for what, what, what's think, the value of what, what you see? Well, I, you know, you might think, oh, well, you haven't had any leads for, you know, 12 months, but in a, to wait, you know, I might think it's the value isn't there, but I still think it is. I think it's a, uh, it's a bit of a, a security. So I know if you know, I can fall back on leads if I need to, um, there's the branding, you know, that you're paying into. Um, there's the support, you know, if there's a curly one or a tricky one or a big job that I need help quoting, you know, there's the franchisors that I can lean on. There's the other franchisees in town that if you get stuck with a, um, a, a particular job that you need help with, you know, you can call them on, they, they'll come and help you out. Or equipment, you know, if you need a hand. I've had franchisees turn up here with a belt off a zero term on a Saturday morning and couldn't get it back on. So, you know, help them get it back on and so they could go off and finish off their day and get home to their family. So that's part of you know, what you're a part of, your fees are paying, you know, paying into that as well. So, um, you know, and everything, you know, behind the scenes there at um, down in Melbourne, you know, the call centre, you know, being which really end of the day is providing customer service to franchisees, franchisors, and more importantly, our customers. So, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you said the brand a few times, Nathan, because, um, yeah, I look at it from a little bit different perspective because I sit in the office all the, all the time. But it's it's more about like, you know, you got this Jim's Mowing brand, which is has like almost cult-like status in Australia, right? You've got like, you know, Bunnings, you know, you've got Dan Murphy's, and you've got like Jim's Mowing, which we see online all the time at the young kids. Like it's sort of, it's like this cultural icon of a brand, which you can pay a really small, like a, a flat fee amount every month to get access to, to use on anything you want. And as soon as people see that, they know that it's trusted, you know, they know it's Aussie owned, they know that you've got, you know, front, all this yeah. stuff behind it, right? And it's a really small share. Where if you were to buy a share of Bunnings or, you know, McDonald's or whatever to, to put on whatever you're doing, you're paying a lot of money for that. Whereas with our IP or the Jim's buying IP, you're paying, and all for that goodwill of all the franchisees, which yourself and previous ones that come before you do all this great work, all that goodwill just makes it more valuable. Yet the fee really doesn't, only goes up with CPI generally most years. So um, I'm glad you said the brand a few times because it's so important and people definitely underestimate it and go, well, what does the brand actually mean? So that's that's you've said a lot of great stuff around that sort of um, tonight as well. Now, in regards to um, advice for someone looking at Jim's mowing or thinking about doing it, what would you say to them? And sort of what research did you do in, when you were investigating it? Um, jump in, you know, go for it. Uh, you know, the I think it's foolproof, and I think um, you know I listen to. Uh, I listened back the other day to um, Gary uh, from uh, the podcast. Gary Nolan? Yeah. Um, um, he does the lawn, the lawn mowing, uh, lawn mower, uh, I can't remember. 
uh, Lawn Stars Australia podcast. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And um, he, yeah, when he interviewed um, Jim and uh, the and he he was talking about the value value of the brand as well and you know understanding and he I think Gary actually said that if he was to go go hadn't started off independent he and I think he said he couldn't get the finance because he had gone through a divorce and whatever he actually went the way of independent but he said if he hadn't he would have gone gyms he said because of the cost of the the brand because he knew and you know, understood the lead system the way that leads worked um, you know the the work guarantee. Um, there's just every all those all those things all those the risk I'm not going to say there's no risk but a lot of the risk is taken out by going with gyms um, you know there's so much support there um, so yeah I, I I think it's a no-brainer to go in with gyms mowing you know there's a lot of people out there who think that oh yeah Jim's just in it for himself blah blah blah, blah. well people in business are in it for themselves aren't they yeah so yeah Box, I said, yeah, but he's he's making so many, you know, however many thousands of franchisees he's got, he's making them uh, providing a great lifestyle, great income to, for their families through his business, through that brand. So I'm glad you said that, Nathan. And um, I see it all the time. So I obviously manage social media and I manage Jim's stuff, and and I see it all the time. And you know, Jim's a greedy millionaire and this and that. And I feel like saying to them, like, if Jim really wanted to, he could not charge flat fee. It could be revenue revenue share or it could be percentage of turnover, yeah. and he'd be doing far, far better. Yeah. But but his attitude is like, well, I haven't done anything to make your business, but that's the franchisee. So the more mm. you earn, the more should be down to you. I've done nothing at head office. But um, it's a very fair system, and it's great to hear someone from, like, Lawn Stars podcast because it's an independent mowing channel talk mm-hmm. about gyms. And I, have, I do get sent stuff a bit about where they mention gyms mowing and stuff, and they've always been very fair and, other podcasts as well, which we get Jim onto with lawn stuff. It's um, yeah, it's a really good industry in regards to how they view Jim's mowing. Um, it, it's quite, it's quite um, you wouldn't think it might not be that case because Jim's mowing is obviously the biggest, and it might be you know a bit of competition and stuff. But it's it's really good from hearing those industry podcasts where Jim's mowing comes up. They said exactly uh, the similar things to what you were saying then. Mm. So there's yeah, there are some people out there who, and that's mainly other um, in the independents who will knock Jim's mowing, you know, they will say that, you know, the Jim's mowing franchisee did the, this and better then, yeah. oh, they didn't blow down properly. They built all, they blew all the grass onto the road and it's like, no, they didn't because if, you know, if they did, they would get a complaint and then they've got to answer the gym. Or, but then you see independents doing exactly the same thing, you know, so yeah. it's. It's quite funny, Nathan. I do. Um, TikTok's one of our biggest social media channels. And whenever we post a video about mowing or something, we get comments from independents, you know, Jim's mowing guy did this, blah, 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 blah. Or I get, I get all these clients because the Jim's mowing, I get all these clients from Jim's mowing because they're no good, blah, 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 blah. And I think that's like, I feel like saying it's the other way around. We get a lot of clients or you guys will get a lot of clients because they've had a bad experience with the independent who hasn't been insured or has just disappeared because he couldn't sustain his business or just stopped rocking up for whatever reason, done a bad job. And then they come to Jim's mowing after they've tried to go for the other option first. So it works in a bit of reverse as well. And I, I see a lot of the independent stuff, what you're just saying as well online. And um, they're probably not aware of just how strict the customer service and the complaint system is uh, with our franchisees. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 No worries. Was there anything else, Nathan, I haven't asked you that maybe you want to share or anything, a plug, a plug from Todd and Sarah Bryson or something that you might get some free beer out or something. I don't know, but is there? Uh, um... No, all I can say is, you know, if you are considering jumping into gyms, you know, I'm happy to take people out on, you know, trial day so they can understand, you know, teach them some of the bits and pieces that I've learned over the time. Um, you know, there's some really, really good guys out there that are um, willing to help. Um, you know, Todd and Sarah are um, great franchisors and I'm sure that they'd, um, yeah, there's plenty of spots around, around you know, Northern New South Wales ready to go, I think. Um and you know the opportunities out there to earn earn good money, create a good lifestyle for you and your family. Yeah. Oh, thanks for your time, Nathan. You've done a you've done a great job to start during or just before COVID with the online training to do as well as you've done. It's not a, it's not the common thing. Most people who did the online training we knew from surveys actually did poor poorer than doing the training in person. Yeah. So to do as well as you what you've done is a, is a really big outlier, and you've done a fantastic job and do a great work so we're going to get this on the system log for you which is the silver core membership which is two free nights to stay at any a core brand it's like sofitel pullman wherever you want to stay for two free nights 
and you get 50% of up to your dining bill at over 1,400 restaurants, percentage of drinks, all this different stuff as well. So hopefully you, you and the partner can enjoy that. And on behalf of Jim's group and Jim's mowing, thank you for joining us tonight and thank you for all the hard work you do. We appreciate it. No worries. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Nathan. All right, then. Thanks, mate. Thanks for joining me, Nathan. Thank you for listening to the episode of the More Than Just Mowing podcast by Jim's Mowing. If you do need help with your local gardening expert, please give us a call at 131546 for Australia, 0800 454 654 for New Zealand, or head to jimsmowing.com.au or jimsmowing.co.nz. If you liked what you heard, please make sure you leave us a review as well. Wherever you consume your podcast, we appreciate your support. And until next episode, we hope you have a great week.